boys and girls, I'm Nick in the States, and today we're going to talk about the Gibson M2. What's M2 mean? Well, it means sort of, kind of, almost Melody Maker. These bad boys were actually an exclusive run for Amazon um, and sold with an estimated or standard price of $3.99, free shipping if you had Amazon Prime. So $400 Gibson made in the USA, um, and it's, it's an interesting mix of stuff. Uh, they have offer these in a slew of colors. So we'll put those up here. Um, you know, black with a red guard, white with a gray guard. This one, a citron green, kind of Kawasaki green looking one. Um, the red one with a white guard. And I'm sure I'm missing one, but you can see them all down below. And it really is a modern take on the classic Melody Maker formula of a super thin body. This one's actually made of, I believe it's alder um, or poplar. It's popular. This one has a maple neck, kind of satin finish to the neck, rosewood fretboard. You know, you have headstock back at an angle. What you don't have, though, is your body. Your neck is mounted flat with a body instead of mounted with an angle like on a Les Paul, so it doesn't really have any arch to the top. This actually presents you know, the one flaw that everybody's complaining about with this guitar, and that fact is that the bridge, when it's all the way down, because it has so much top lean from how it's mounted, you can kind of see there. I'll probably try and just throw a picture. It'll probably see better if I go this way, right? Um, the bridge leans forward because it's not a tight groove in, the, in the, the, the posts. And what happens is, is it's up high. So even if you slam the bridge all the way down to the bottom of the post, you can't get the action quite as low as what some people would like. The, the possible solutions are some people have wedged some things in there to try and keep that bridge from coming up so high. Other people have swapped the bridge out for lower profile ones. Um, we'll have perhaps some more a separate video on fixing the M3's bridge and possible solutions. I've got a badass bridge out back that came with its own posts. I'm hoping that works there. So that's issue number one on these. Issue number two for Gibson Purists. While this has nitro satin finish neck, a nitro finish to the body that is good. I mean, sure, it's not done to the quality of high-end Gibsons. I can see through the wood. It probably hasn't been grain-filled. Um, but it doesn't look bad. It's shiny. It's not faded. Uh, it's, it's cool that way. Everything that isn't wood and frets on this guitar came from the East. So the tuners are no-name, some kind of probably Korean or Chinese tuners. The pickups in this are the same pickups that are in some of the Fender blacktop strats. And in fact, they're also the same pickups that are in um, some Epiphones there. Uh, so Gibson calls them a Gibson Pro Bucker. Pro Bucker is kind of an Epiphone term. Um, and these ones are just labeled kind of anonymously in the back. I can flash up some pictures there. Um, Korean made pots. Uh, Three-way switchcraft style switch at least does. It's a pretty good switch. Um, and it does have the Gibson Quick Connect that I think even some Epiphones have now. So you could swap out other Gibson pickups in this without having to do soldering on it. That's really kind of cool. I will say that these pickups are pretty hot. Going from playing a lot of Japanese guitars today doing videos. Um, I still haven't done a full setup on the action, it's pretty high, but definitely high output. That was the, 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 the neck, it's the uh, middle. Bridge. A little harsh. Both pickups could probably use to be just brought down a little bit to maybe nullify some of that high output. Um, this is exactly how it came set up. Likewise, the nut could definitely use to be filed a bit deeper. If I strum, we go make a D chord. definitely get some compression in the springs and go out of tune if you squeeze kind of hard on your cowboy cording. Um, something to be known there. This one actually isn't so bad. I mean, you could definitely use to have a little bit of a fret end file, but it's not like going to make me bleed. 
Um, but overall, for like your classic kind of. <laughs> Kind of nice, kind of funky. Does some stuff, you know, clean them up a little bit with a little soul food and just. Kind of get an idea there. Like, pretty. Cleans up nicely. Actually, cleans up surprisingly nice. Mm -hmm. is these are El Nico pickups are not ceramics which is kind of cool kind of gives it a little bit mellower even though it's high output not as piercy um, we'll see how it comes into the recording zone Nice stabby, kind of fun, stabby, uh, fun little pickups. For what this is, $400 guitar, if you keep your eye out on Amazon warehouse deals, you can sometimes get them for $360, $340, sometimes down in the twos. Um, and at that point, for a bang around, gigging guitar, punky guitar, give it a little bit of love, it's, it's going to be a good guitar. Um, and it's a real USA Gibson. If that's really important to you, I want to own a Gibson. You can get into this for used Mexican strat money. It's true. One of the things I definitely noticed with this guitar is it does have plenty of sustain. And I think that's probably the wraparound bridge, the maple neck, the everything else. Somehow it all makes this thing actually be a sustainy beast. So there is a degree of you get what you pay for, right? It's a Gibson. It's really thin. It's pretty light. Um, it's got the tuners are fine, stays in tune. The bridge situations probably less than ideal and for some people that's a, a game breaker the action on this is still pretty high it needs to come down um and then uh, the all asian import electronics i was talking to funky today and he was like oh, i wish i had known that i might not have bought it I'm like it's they're still not bad and they're, they're high output i will say you know uh you probably can go a little bit more into modern rocky metal with these versus you know your classic paf style stuff it's definitely punchier more outputty uh, it's worth worth uh, checking out that way. Um, the challenge with these is you really can't see one or play one without buying it online or buying it used. So, you know, know what you're getting. Cool guitar, neat. For the money, you know, for the money for a Gibson, right? It's all a sliding scale. For the money for a Gibson, it's a great deal. 
Um, even used Gibson's in the three fifty four hundred dollar range. Used, it's, it's, you get like some of the older single pickup melody makers, or some stuff that's got stories to tell. <laughs> and usually involving like saws and grinding stuff off and whatever. So those are uh, that's kind of this. Um, are there better three hundred dollar guitars out there? Four hundred dollar guitars out there? Oh yes, 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 there are. Um, but is it made in the USA? You know, even with some import stuff, but it's still a made in the USA guitar, um, which is kind of important, like, especially to a lot of people. I, I wanted to make sure that I got one of these because this channel really tries to look at guitars right around up to 500, sometimes a little over. Sometimes we look at some really nice high-end stuff. But, uh, but we try to look at those guitars because that's what a lot of people buy sight unseen. So I wanted to get this in and very, very cool. I am going to try and do a comparison video for this in the near future. We compare this to the $200 bolt neck Epiphone one that's very much a similar competitor to this. And uh, kind of really get a feel for, is the Made in the USA tax worth it? Anyway, keep your eyes peeled for that. I've been Nick in the States. Yes, folks, I have issues. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.